Good day everybody, um, my name is Michael and in this video I want to talk about uh, some really cool ways you can really serve data on HDFS using uh, client-side tools like um, Microsoft Excel and uh, ClickView. So uh, first and foremost is very very important to know that in the field of data engineering the bottom goal, the bottom line is about saving data. Now you could be saving data in real time, you could be saving data in real time to human users, you could be saving data in real time to system users, you could be saving data in batch uh, using analytic tools to human users and also to system users. But whatever the case may be, the end result is about saving data. Um, you may be saving data after processing or applying machine learning models, or but you may be saving data as soon as you get them. Whatever the case may be, it's worth knowing that data storage is less of a problem uh, than trying to save the data. Once you get the data, you save it. But the entire goal of um, data engineering is about storing data in a way that makes retrieval user-friendly, easy, efficient, and likable. So um, in, in, in this, I will just show you how we're using the Cloudera Quickstart VM. So uh, for those who don't know about the Cl uh, Cloudera Quickstart VM, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, uh, a Hadoop sandbox that you can just download and you can set it up on Ada, Oracle, VirtualBox or VMware or even Docker. So you can go to the Cloudera website and download it. So in this case, I am using Hive and Impala on the Cloudera Quickstart VM. Then I'm going to be using um, Excel and ClickView on my host machine. Yes, so um, the, the VM is going to serve as my server and the tools are going to serve as the client. Right, so they are different kind of architecture, but let's just leave it simple. The data set we're using for this class or for this meeting will be um, a data set for real-time uh, sorry airtime online performance right so you can go to this website and know more about it but basically it's about um, records of flights records of flight and you're trying to track the um, you're, we're, we're trying to predict or analyze flight delays across um, the United States now if you download it's about um, it's data what's 22 years but for the sake of this class and brevity we're only using six of those years and this is the definition it also have some supplementary data for like airports uh, the carriers the plane information and weather so we're gonna keep it simple and the idea is we're gonna use um, Excel to get this data from HDFS which is in our uh, sandbox and then afterwards we're still going to do another trial to see if we can use click view to get this data to do that you need some form of database connectivity and in and right now we're using um, Cloudera uh, ODBC and JDBC driver in this case ODBC driver so you can use the ODBC driver for Hive or you can use the ODBC driver for Impala now well, what's the difference Impala and Hive they are quite compatible to a, to a very high, a high um, degree uh, but we're choosing Impala because of the low latency features uh, your users will always want something faster whatever the case may be and since you have abstracted every your, your entire big data infrastructure to a warehouse they don't just care they think they're running select and they want it to be fast and that's basically it so we're going to be using the low latency low latency um, pala okay so once you have downloaded your driver you will install it and uh, on installation you would have it in your um, data source at uh, go to control panel administrative tools odbc data source uh, 32 bit or 32 bit or 64 bit you will have them right here so you can see i have installed the cloudera hive and impala 64 bits and 32 bit as well so once you do that you will then come to set up the uh, um, data source name to your particular database you do that by saying add 
In this case, I want to use Impala. You say add, you put some names in here, description. And in this case, I just use localhost. Localhost because um, I have port forwarding right so because i have port forwarding i am actually acting like local host but if your database is on the cloud you want to use the real uh, host name yes so those who have the database in the cloud whether it's microsoft azure whether it's uh, oracle whether it's um, amazon emr or ec2 whatever the case may be you can now connect to the cloud and download it now because this is the quick start vm there's no security setup so i'm using um um no authentication ideally you want to use one of the others username and password Kerberos and um, SESL username and other stuff but right now we're just leaving it as simple as we get it so if I double click on these and I test you can see that yes my connection is successful so I can connect to the cloud there are quick start VM Impala airline database okay so once that is all set it's almost set in. You can now start using Excel or any other tool. Um, as a matter of fact, if you if you also do it for JDBC, you can do the same thing. Those who want to use JDBC are those who are using Java based tools like uh, Pentaho, uh, Jasper, the Jasper Suite, Jasper Report, um, BIRT, and even writing your own custom uh, reporting application. You can use the JDBC jars, and the connection is almost uh, virtually the same thing. So, uh, having said that, let me take you to the quick, uh, quick start VM and show you what we've done so far. So, we want to look at what we are trying to. We're looking at what we're trying to um, to browse or what we're trying to analyze, right? Uh, go to quick start VM I'm, and I'm using the uh, Cloud Era Hue tool just to see. It doesn't matter if you're doing the if you're using if you're doing the uh, if you're doing true command line. Uh, all you need to do is uh, since we're using Impala, you would use Impala shell. And uh, my the instance I'm connecting to will be quick start well there are 2100 and uh, yes uh, but if you want to use a username I think you do that and say you cloud there and you put a password um, when you have a password but now we can just go in and we're not using Kyberos authentication we're using the airline data and these are our tables so uh, these are views and these are tables um, now there's a little about compatibility between um, let me just say that a little compatibility between uh, uh, Hive and Impala now most of these were created most of these tables were created with um, with Hive so but not all of them are usable from Impala for instance if I say select star from airport just limit it to two records I'm likely sorry I'm likely to get an error right so I'll get an error because we're using um, these are CSVs we downloaded and in Hive I was using the um, open CSV setters right to read the CSV file uh, so they're not they're not um, I, I cannot use them from Hive so what happens is we created the 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 Impala variants right so um, you may want to have a different way to do it you use CSV then you um, process and turn transform them to parquet and do away with that so I'm just showing you in this class and this, uh, this session we're going to be using the parquet variant so if I run the same thing with uh, parquet uh, you see I can get I can get values and get them fast so having done that this is just to show you if you're using um, probably SSH to connect to your cloud instance but in this case we'll just use um, in this case we're just using um, the cloud directory tool so we can see that um, this is a partition table and uh, for the entire source code for this session you can get them download them right here from the github repository it is a uh, high versus impala all the codes we are using to create the object to download uh, the data sets and create HDFS they are all available so you can go check them out you can clone them uh, and you can fork them to your own report you, to your own repository and work with this is to process uh, a Scala a Spark code to process it and a P code to also do processing on on, uh, on the flight data set itself and uh, we're gonna be using uh, we're using a lot of queries from this 
place to create uh, this to create the partition tables and load them and uh, we are using these views the views is uh, denormalized and it joins the career table the airport information table and the airport table twice one for the origin and the other for the destination then we because this is quite uh, a little bit large we restricted created some views that will give us access to only 2000 and three data uh, 2003 records as well as 2003 to 2005 records so we're going to be using these views in our examples so having seen that we have the data already and uh, let's just try it select um, let's look at 2000 in these select all just give me limit to 100 records and let's see Okay, so we have data to work with, right? So the questions we're trying to answer in this session, we're just going to answer two of the questions we can find on the website. And one will be, um, given the delay, when is the best time of the day or the day of the week or the time of the year to, you, to fly if you want to minimize delay? Uh, do all the planes fly suffer more delay? Um, how does weather? Now, these are a lot of questions you can answer, but the, the point is we want to show you how you can answer them using these client tools and we'll just uh, do that either on, uh, on Excel and on Excel or on, um, on um, ClickView. So for Excel, since you have installed the ODBC, we, you just go to data, um, Microsoft query. This is our ODBC uh, DSN we have created. We OK this. It's going to try to connect to our sandbox. Yes, it did that successfully. And we want to work with this table. Uh, we need a year, one analyze year, month, day of the week. Right. And um, what else do we want to work on the departure delay? Now, there are many other features you want to work on right here, but we just want to work on departure delays and um where's departure delay yeah that's it so your fight is delayed if the departure is delayed we can do a lot of more on anal analysis but let's just uh, leave it at departure delays and that will be it so you say next next we want to sort our record by year and by month next now i want to edit the query because I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you what. Now, when you're working in the realms of, of, of big data, you want to be very mindful how much data you stream across the network, right? So uh, I don't want to pull in all the amount of records. For example, if you're dealing with big data in millions and billions of rows, you don't want the client to be able to just stream all the data into the client tool. I mean, if I did that right now, I will stop using Excel. Excel is going to hang. So what I did, what I like, I like I just said already, I created a view that just restricts this entire analysis to 2003 or 2003 and 2005 out of all the years. Right. Because if we streamed all this amount of data right here, we're going to have problems. So what I what I do is I will do. I, I wrote a query to do further aggregation of the data so that I stream. I'm going to submit with average, max, and count. We're going to reduce, we're going to further reduce the amount of data that we're going to be streaming to our client, uh, our client tool. Very, very important. If you want your, uh, your, your, if you want the report to be usable and reduce, and you also want to reduce the wait time. So I'll just, Take this out and I'll paste this and I'll test it. For example, uh, so this is like uh, you, I'll do, you're doing a filter at the server level. You're already doing a filter at the very low level and you're going to work with only few. So we got some data. It's still much, but we got some data, right? And we just return to Excel. At this stage, we want to do a pivot table. And um, a lot of you are a lot more... Um, good at excel than that i am probably and so um you already get the idea that once you have the data on your on your on your on excel you can now do a lot of things with it you can analyze it you can perform uh um, um what uh, different kind of analysis you can draw your pivot charts and what have you so right here we would just say we want the average um what the average 
departure delay on the on the on the uh, columns then on the uh, sorry as the values on the column we want days of weeks we want to compare days of weeks then on the row we want to check the year and the months so if we do something like this and uh, we say uh, we don't need grand total so i'll hide that uh, we say good so you you have the you have the idea what it is you can see that um there was actually um down through the years actually uh you can see that which month has more delay if you look at the year and you can basically begin to do your analysis right here right um it's very difficult to look at it like this so you probably want to um you probably want to add a pivot chart. Uh, you probably want to add a pivot chart to get the idea you're trying to make. So let's close. Let me hide this. Uh, let's see a pivot chart. Um, yeah, you want to put a pivot chart or see. Let's see if we use a line graph to look at all the years. Um, to look at the days. I think uh, find a way to take out this this column now some there are some unknown monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and i can't find sunday okay so this is likely going to be a problem with my query right so this is probably friday saturday and sunday right so let's look at the query to see what happened there we use the case statement yes that's where the error came from seven should be sunday six is saturday seven is sunday so that is where the error is coming from uh, if you don't mind i will just copy this and fix that quickly uh, um, alter view of the flights enum as view flights enum okay so there was a bug in my query and um, I am going to recreate these views based on that so basically you get the idea once uh, once you already have been able to bring the data to Excel it now all depends on your skill your ability to to analyze the data okay so that is Excel right so let's now move on to so once you have it all your ability to chart and do anything is your excel skills it's no longer uh, big data but the most important thing is reduce the amount of data you pull to the report by doing your aggregation try and do your aggregation at the server level try to do your filtering at the server level don't try to filter one billion record in excel uh, i have done that before and it just excel just broke right so but when you have so that is for example, but when you have a tool like ClickView, uh, which also in itself has a client server architecture, you can afford to do all that on the server. So you probably using like ClickView publisher and you're running, um, uh, you're going to refresh your QVDs and all those stuff. You will you, you have that you have that latitude to pull as much data in into the server because it's now a server server connection your client users will just uh, be using the a clear view service like a web application or whatever kind of application as a client so we can do that kind of stuff in click view so to connect to click view it's basically the same i will open my script editor i will connect to odbc i will get all the data i am trying to get so this would be odbc connect using odbc to flight database the airline it's the air, it's airline database and i can now select all my columns right because i have created a very very wide table um i will more likely so i could do select all these but i would more likely want to just use the wide the very wide table so i'll pick this as a matter of fact okay and i hope Okay, so I'll take this uh, just for 2003 to 2005 and um, to give them all a name, I just want to pick all. Yeah, because I'm not using Excel now, I'm using ClickView. I'll say okay and 
I will reload this. Now this is gonna take a while, so I have to save the file and say click view on airline flight. Right, so it's gonna take a while, so we're just gonna pause quickly and wait till this uh, is done. Okay, welcome back. You see, okay, it took about um, 15 minutes to download over 30 points. Um, three million records now you can notice that we did not do the same thing we did in Excel because uh, uh, click view like um, click view like tableau and other um, BI visualization tools have their own analytical engine they have the power they have the server and the client architecture and they can handle they can handle data they can handle load and can actually deliver their own form and analytics and uh, visualization. So we did not do what we did in Excel in ClickView. And if you're using Tableau, the same applies. You don't have to do that. On the server, you download everything. It's going to store them in its own um, its own internal data structure and deliver visualization. So having done that, we can now answer as many questions as we can find in this place because we have all the data we need we can answer as much question but let's just do one for instance uh, let's keep the current selection here so and uh, let's now add a chart let's just start with the chart and let's do a line chart and we're trying to we'll be analyzing um, a time of Flights in time of year. What? Then we will say we want a line chart. Next is uh, what do we want. We want just want to deal with the departure delay. Right up. Uh, so no, our dimension. I'm sorry, is not uh, departure delay. Our dimension is our dimension is the month. Is it what did we say? We said um, time of the year. So they, we, we did with the year and the month. So year month is our dimension, and uh, our value expression will be average of departure delay, right? So this is our expression, and. Uh, we can add more so we can add uh, maximum departure delay right so we can add that we can uh, the label is um, average delay average delay departure right then this is maximum departure delay delay maximum delay the patch of us use the same right then we can also put um yeah we can leave it at that then we'll go next uh, the dimension is this should be sorted by ascending next this is what it should look like and finish okay so this is what our chart looks like so from 2003 from 2003 um, it doesn't look sorted anyway so I'll go back to sort and use state right state apply okay now that looks more sorted yes looks more sorted so this is uh, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, uh, September, where's the rest? Okay, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Okay, we're only stopping in September. Okay, but then we can now see the, um, the, the chart showing us the average delay, which is here, and the maximum delay right so um, it's like 
the difference is so much that we cannot see any pattern in the average delay so in this case i will take out the maximum delay for now and let's see if there's any pattern in the yes in the average so it, it really obscured it unless we normalized it if we normalize both we can now relate to both pattern but we're not about that uh, we're not about that um that science right now so we can see that right here we have seasonality right i mean this seasonality is very very clear right there's one here and oh clear and there is another here right so we can see these are the times of the year you should avoid flying avoid flying at these times of the year right and you see another part of that seasonality here so avoid flying at that time of the year okay we can say let's add a little more uh, <clears throat> let's add a, a, a field view uh let's go down to career for instance and career so let's see if this applies to the career so if we checked come air for instance does it still apply right uh, if we say come air and these does it apply yes it does apply right if we took out all of them you can see it's almost the same thing like when you when you selected all of them so we can start if we pick united airline alone yes we can also say it applies but it has shifted right the, the spike the delays the delay spike has shifted it's now different from when you have that okay now we can say if we try the day of the week let's add the day of the week day of week right then we will pick day of week so let's see if this pattern the pattern that applies if it applies for a monday for instance it doesn't change anything a saturday okay we have more delays on saturdays average delays sundays yeah totally different um if we do all this yeah nothing changed so day of the week is not um it's not really a factor but if we put so we can now say alaska airline and you see on fridays it really went bad on these dates right only went bad on this date if not it's in minutes you are you generally don't you're not uh, you're not um, going to be except for these dates the delay is in 10 minutes it's in 10 minutes and um, that's not bad so you can see we can now do i mean the 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 um the the possibilities are ended you can if this is too full you can add a new sheet right so where's this new sheet stuff add a new sheet you add a, a different chart to see for all delays in america who accounts for most and you see your level of analysis you can you have all the data right now uh, let's put the age of plane for instance the age of plane let's see if it contributes to what we call that so let's say planes that are just zero years old okay let's compare that with planes that are 18 years old any difference not really so the age of the plane does not really change uh, planes in their first year okay so looking at it we can say the age of the planes does not really affect uh, uh, does not really determine the the delay and these are in minutes by the way so uh, 0 to 16 minutes and that information we got from here so departure delay uh, sorry departure delay in minutes so with the tools we we have just one single uh, click view that uh, we have created and we can almost use it to answer all the questions here best time of the day best time of the year best uh, time day of the week um, do planes older planes suffer more delay we just saw that is more likely no uh, does the number of people fly as long as you have the data set that we have pulled in from Cloudera and Pala into click view we can answer that question so that is it i hope you now get how you can really add value to your company or to your organization by serving um, uh, uh, analytical data on hdfs 
using Excel or click or oh, click view tableau whatever the names of the tool uh, or whatever the name of the tool is Thank you. And quickly, let me note that this actually, this uh, video is actually an add-on to a class that was held on Desire.com, and um, we were we were trying to analyze um, airline on-time online performance set. Uh, students in that class learned a lot more on how to process data with Pig and Spark. Uh, we compared Hive with um, Impala and Drill. Um, we talked about um, uh, this is Michael. Uh, we talked about uh, partitioning in both of them, clustering and uh, data sampling in Hive, uh, compression, tuning, query optimization, creating views, building time series data model, and of course visualization uh, with Excel and click view, like you can see. So um, the, the the source code for these you can find in this github repository you can download all the queries the peak script the spark script um, the data preparation script and um, everything you need to build the um, the data infrastructure in cloudera quickstat vm that led to this so thank you